hey loves and welcome back to my channel with tijama here and in today's video we are going to be making this v-neck shirt you can notice that the front part of this shirt does not have a round neck it has a v-neck and the button is below the under boss waistline then this is the sleeve it has you can see the the um cuff cuff area you can see the cuff area you can see that it is not like the normal sleeve cuff that we normally sew with a placket now i have just two and a half yard of fabric i have two and a half yard this outfit has a trouser but we are focusing on the shirt the shirt looks somehow easy but it is somehow it is tricky as well now i will be drafting the back part of this shirt first of all after drafting the back i will use it to draft the front sorry when i was drafting this i didn't know my camera was not recording now i have my chest line my bust point half length full length the full length is 28 plus two inches seam allowance half length is 17 bust point is 11 chest line is nine chest line is usually two inches above above the bust point then i took her body measurements plus extra 1.5 inch seam allowance 1.5 inch seam allowance i don't want the allowance to be too much then for the neckline i used three inches by one inch for the back three inches by one for the back at the full length i measured i divided her hip by four plus 1.5 the allowance is 1.5 1.5 you know this is shirt it doesn't have to be tight now i'll go ahead and cut out this paper and after cutting out the paper i will use this particular paper to cut out the front then the difference between a normal shirt and this shirt is that when drafting the front i will not add a button allowance normally if you are drafting your shirt you add a button allowance right but i will not add a button allowance i will cut out this paper and then i will use it to cut out the front also that the front and the back part of this paper is the same no button allowance though i have not drafted the neckline for now then i will connect from the neck width the three inches at the neck width i will connect to somewhere under her boss points line you can see my boss points line and my half length so for the front i'll just mark a v neckline instead of round neckline i'll mark a v neckline you can see the v neckline then i will leave like four inches then from the from that place where the neckline stopped that you come down by like four inches and then from that four inches that four inches fell on the half length i will spread the down part by two inches like from the half length i will mark another inverted v or another inverted another triangular line so that the down part of the shirt will spread if you check the picture the down part of that shirt spread it it has this v shape the neckline has a v shape the down part has a v shape so you can see how i'm cutting it out i'll cut out the v at the full length then from the half length to the neckline will be straight then from that straight you cut out your v neckline this is the front and you can see that i did not add any button allowance here i will add my button allowance on my paper or you can as well use a facing you can as well use facing to turn this 
now we are done cutting that and this is what i'm going to be using for my sleeve the first thing that i'm going to do is to draft a basic sleeve and my sleeve is going to be 27 inches long i want it to be long like if you check the picture that we have on the thumbnail you notice that the sleeve of this outfit is actually long so i'll go ahead and mark my 27 6 inches for the bicep 12 inches for the elbow and 27 is the full length of this sleeve. you will draft a basic sleeve first of all before you cut out the band of the sleeve or the cuff of the sleeve so right now i'm marking straight lines and i'll go ahead and take my sleeve measurement so this is a shirt and the sleeve has to be free right what i'm going to be doing is that if you divide your sleeve measurement into, into two you add extra one inch or 1.5 extra one inch for seam allowance her top is 15 inches plus divided by two plus extra elbow is 14 divided by 2 plus extra 1 inch then the wrist is 8 divided by 2 plus extra 1 inch seam allowance just add extra 1 1 inch seam allowance to your sleeve measurement then i'm going to curve i'm going to curve my armhole after covering my armhole i will cut out the sleeve pattern now after cutting this sleeve pattern what you are going to do is that from the full length of this sleeve you will come up by how many inches you want your band to be and the band of this sleeve is somehow long the band of the sleeve is long so the full length is 27 right from the full length from the full length of this sleeve i went up by five and a half or six inches though later i increased it if you want your band to be very long you can go up by six inches or by seven inches then i'll go ahead and cut out i'll cut out the band now the upper part is the main sleeve then this one is the band i'll still cut out the band on a separate fabric now this is the fabric that i will be using i'll go ahead and cut out my my front and back pieces including my sleeve pieces so the first thing that i'm going to cut out here is the front part of this shirt the front part of this shirt you have a button allowance but i did not add it to the paper when I, when I was drafting to the paper i am going to add it to the fabric so now i am done folding my fabric so if i am cutting i'll go ahead and add two two inches seam allowance to the front part of this this shirt for button allowance you can as well use a facing you can just cut out a facing use your facing to turn it by the way the the button is just somewhere around the waist it does not have lots of buttons so right now i'll go ahead and add two two inches two two inches allowance to this so after adding that allowance that allowance will serve as the button allowance i'll still go ahead and fold it it will serve as the button allowance so you don't really need to add button allowance to your own either you use facing to turn the front part or you add to two inches for hemming like you use two inches to fold it now the next thing that i'm going to do right now is to cut out the back after cutting the back i'll also cut out the sleeve done cutting out the sleeve the main sleeve and the back now i want to cut out the band the band i will cut it on fold you will see the way i will cut out the band of this sleeve and like i told you guys i'll also add extra allowance so i'll cut it out on fold i'll fold and i'll fold again so that i will have two bands then i will place it this way after placing it you go ahead and add half an inch half an inch seam allowance round 
the band of the sleeve so now this is the band we have for our sleeve and i'll go ahead and close the sides if i'm stitching i'll just close the sides before turning then after doing this the next thing that i'm going to do right now is to start stitching my outfit first of all i will start off by folding the button allowance of the front then close this um like i told you close this band the sides of the band after closing the sides of the band you can keep it aside now this is the front pieces you can see what i have i'll go ahead and fold in two two inches first of all I'll go ahead and fold in two two inches allowance and you can see that it is taking shape already so i am done folding in that two inches and i'll go ahead and iron this shirt very well i'll just go ahead and iron this allowance very very well after ironing it you will also indicate where you add your button and where you add your button hole so after doing that i'll go ahead and iron i had to run two stitches on the button allowance in order for it to lay flat then after that you go ahead and iron then after ironing i will come back and i will join the front and the back pieces of these um shirts now i am done ironing before i'll join the front and the back i'll just go ahead and pin the two of them down so after pinning them down you will now place the back piece on it on them you know this is just the front after pinning them down you will place the back piece on this and then you will shape just use one one inch seam allowance to shape the sides now i am done i am done shaping and i'm done joining my shoulder the next thing that we are going to do is to measure the color the color of this shirt is actually tricky because the front the front neckline doesn't have a round neck for a normal color so what i'm going to do is that using my tape using my tape i will just come down by three inches or four inches at the front like i'll just cut from the shoulder i'll come down by three inches or four inches from the shoulder come down by three or four and you mark then on the other side also come down by three or four inches and you will mark that is where the color of this shirt will stop at because we don't really have a round neck then from those points you measure you will mark you, you, you mark you measure so for measuring from the points where i marked four inches on the right side to the points where i marked four inches on the left side i got 14 inches but i don't really like the 14 i had to like increase it to like 16 so that the color you come down a bit i don't want it to be hanging i want the color to come down a bit now this is what we have this is the paper and i have folded my paper so this color is going to be a cut together color so i told you guys that i want to make the color 16 inches right so 16 divided by 2 is 8 then for the width of the color you know we are it's a cut together color so the color stand and the main color will be together i made two of them 3.5 i made the length of the height of the color 3.5 then the length the round neck length is 16 inches so i'll go ahead and connect and around that full length i'll slant it a bit i'll just slant it a bit you can see the shape i have right there and this is my color so using this paper i'll go ahead and cut out two pieces we are going to cut out two pieces for this color the one that will serve as the main fabric and the one that will serve as the lining
now after cutting them out i'll go ahead and add interface to the both of them in order to make them strong then after adding interface i'll go ahead and join i've added interface to the both of them i'll use half an inch to close the sides and the upper part of this color so after closing that part i'll go ahead and trim after trimming i'll iron a one piece color is really easy to sew most ready to wear styles they they use one piece color they don't really do two pieces two piece color so i'll just go ahead and trim after trimming i will turn and iron Now I am done ironing and I will trim off the unequal parts. So the next thing that we are going to do is that we are going to fold into to notch the center of that collar. It is very important. Notch the center of the collar. Then after notching the center of the collar, you will fold in half an inch, half an inch on both sides of the collar. You fold in and iron because that is the allowance you use to attach it to the neckline. Now I'll go ahead and get the center back of this collar also. I'll get the center back and notch. Then you make sure that the notch on the collar and the notch on the center back are equal. And then you will go ahead and sew round. So after sewing round, I've attached this collar. You can see the collar now. Though it doesn't have a round neck, but the collar is really looking nice. So make sure you notch the center back of the collar and the center back of the shirt. Then you go ahead and attach. After attaching it, we'll go ahead and make our sleeve. So this is our sleeve part. First of all, you shape the men's sleeve separately. I will use one inch or half an inch to shape the men's sleeve. After shaping the men's sleeve, I will turn and iron. Then after ironing the men's sleeve, we are going to turn our band our band or our cuff so i'll keep the main sleeve aside i've ironed right so these are the pieces for our band you can add interface to yours if you want to add interface i'll just go ahead and shape with half an inch half an inch and then i'll also shape this one with half an inch half an inch just the sides then after shaping i will iron then this is the main the main sleeve right i'll go ahead and attach the cuff these, these are the cuff I've, I do, i'm done ironing the cuff you just fold them together and then you attach so i'm not adding any button to this cuff that's why i did not add any allowance to it you can see there's no button allowance there the cuff will just overlap a bit at that joining part so you can see the first sleeve i'll go ahead and sew the cuff round the cuff will just be open like it will be open no button so this one also i'll go ahead and fix it so if it is more you can just overlap the cuff area a bit so right now i'll go ahead and attach you can just stitch down the cuff a bit and just overlap them and stitch a bit before you fix now i am done fixing and this is what the cuff looks like it is really nice it is just overlapping a bit just a bit so guys at the end of the day i'll go ahead and attach the my sleeve after attaching your sleeve you can now mark your button allowance and you will fix your button where you want your button to be at so registration for our online classes is ongoing in case you want to register just drop a comment in the comment section and i will direct you on how to register i hope our shirt is beautiful thank you guys for watching and see you all in my next video bye